Hello everybody, welcome to episode 3 of City Talk. This week we are joined by club captain Garod Morrissey. Welcome Garod. Cheers, Dees. Thanks for having me, bud. No worries. I think it's pretty easy to come up with a, a title for this week's uh, podcast in this straight out of Mahin. How does that sound? Mahin. Yeah, unreal. by Mahin United. <laughs> so we're going to do maybe half Cork City, half Ring Mahin. How about that? Yeah, yeah. Sounds good, bye. Uh, very good. Only joking. Look, uh, just to kind of take you through um, the episode for this week, so we're going to catch up with Garrod on how he's getting on at the moment during the pandemic, how um, how his training has been, what he's been doing to be taking over and, and interacting with the team. Then we're going to go through a run of uh, Garrod's career right from, from underage, his move to Blackburn, coming back to City, moving back over and everything in between. And everything that's led him up to to now being the the club captain. Um, so and then we're going to have a little bit of fun, a couple of questions, uh, questions from the fans. And so yeah, let's get let's get cracking. Uh, Garrod, how are you keeping? Yeah, not too bad. But um, you know, self same as everybody really. He's trying to um, he's trying to get through the days, and hopefully you get an, an extra bit of information every day. You know, and like for me, we're having meetings then with the PFA and stuff, and. I'd be the, I'm the club delegate with us, so I'm in them meetings kind of all week. So my weeks consist of just training, trying to stay a face leading up to them meetings. And then when you go to the meetings, you're hoping you get some bit of information that's going to let you know there's a resumption of the league happening, there's a day in place, you know. Um, so that's really what I've been doing, like, you know. And then same as everybody else, just getting out of the house, going for walks and, you know, trying to rest and queuing up in supermarkets and the rest of it. I know there's only so much walks we can go on. I think everyone's kind of learned that definitely from the the pandemic. But um, yeah, let's let's take us back to that. I suppose first of all, I know Neil was speaking to us there, and he was telling us that the players are on programs and stuff like that. What what exactly kind of does that entail? Like a kind of you know, is it a bit of home workouts? Is it out running? You know, are you find it difficult facilities where you used to get a pitch or where have you been kind of doing it all? Yeah, to be fair, um, Joe Gamble put it together like you know, and it's and it's decent because it does um, it caters for that. The fact that he knows like at the start I had to cater for we could only go two kilometers, you know, and some fellas didn't have pitches. You have you couldn't get too far, like you know. So to be fair, um, he worked it around in a way that like you could use whatever was kind of available to you, you know, whether that be a field, a park, or a little a walkway or something, you know. Um, so. It was decent from that point of view, and then like the, the gym stuff, you know, because there's obviously no gyms open, and um, so it was just at home workouts, body weight stuff, even a case of like I don't know wherever you can find there in the house, like to 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 hold in terms of like you know what I mean, just like a couple of kg in each hand kind of thing, just for a couple of lunges here there. So it was inventive. To, oh, it was inventive to be fair. Um, but uh, yeah, look, it got us through, it. and then you do Zoom calls, uh, you know, and there, you know, it's kind of like it's almost. You can you start to plan from it's almost like you're training the next day, you know, the way you plan like you're like right if that tomorrow at ten o'clock or whatever it is. So um you're getting yourself ready and getting I suppose your kit ready or whatever, like you know, so that was decent. So um yeah, it's been a combination of a lot of stuff and um I think it's probably been very difficult for him to kind of bang it all together with yeah. the, what's going on, like, you know. Um but uh, so far so good and then you know, I suppose technology kind of saves it because we have, yeah. you know, the apps there and things to track your run. And you know, we, we had a little bit of a competition there. We were doing five k or two k time trials and things like that. Yeah. And you know, and you were getting the work done and you were doing it by yourself, but you were up against all the lads. You know, so um, yeah. I think that was that was good from from his side as well. You know. Yeah, the competition certainly helps to drive you on. I'd imagine while you're while you're doing it, but I suppose and like take us through a typical week at the moment for yourself. Obviously. You'll be the, your norm would really be Monday, Tuesday, probably double sessions each day, day off Wednesday, training Thursday, then before the game, game Friday, Saturday, kind of recovery. Like, uh, as I spoke to even Colin last week and Neil before that, it's it, like, how much do you even do? You know, it's it's a difficult one, isn't it? Like, how much do you actually do at the moment? Because, you know, you, you can't obviously flog yourself seven days a week and, you know, with and the league could be you know a couple of months away coming back or or even further who knows but how do you even kind of judge that where in your like because obviously footballers would be used to a lot of structure you know pre-season even the pre-pre-season you're you know it's probably going to be tough throughout the season and there's probably a lot of games so your training is probably brought down like how do you even kind of judge that at the moment yeah i think like it's 
that, that's been the hardest part for me, to be honest, because like I'd always, whatever training I'm doing, even like you said there, even during the season, Monday to Friday, I'd know like, right, you know, on a on a, a Monday, I just do the session, the, the gyms or the ball session in the morning, gym session in the afternoon, then Tuesday, I'd know I'd be off on the Wednesday. So mm. after the gym session on the Tuesday, I would do my, like after we do the, the gym with Joe in the afternoon, I would do my own just an extra little bit that I think would keep me sharp, you know, on it. I'd because I know then I'd be off on the Wednesday and then kind of just nice short sharp session on the Thursday. You're ready to go for Friday. But like what I'm trying to say is like there's always a goal, you know what I mean? And you're always yeah. building up towards it yes, or tapering back a little bit because of it. Mm. And um that's what I, I find with this. It was kind of like we were building up like the programs Joe gave us, we were we were kind of building up into it and it was getting tough. And and then I think not so long ago, then it came out that look, this could be September. So then, basically, Joe just said, look, everybody's going to have to have 10 days off. So yeah. he said, like, you know, everyone's going to have to, because you know yourself, like, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you know, you're doing it now, you're putting in the work, and um, you might even, even if, say, if the season went ahead in, in August or September, then, like, you know, a, a month or two into it, you could be, you could be slowing like up a little, little bit. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, so, like, you could be slowing up a little bit and saying, what's going on here? So um, I think that was important that we got the 10 days, but, um, we, yesterday there now he's, he's like as of yesterday yeah Monday so he's put um, another program together for us to go from now until I suppose basically it's now until the next bit of information gets yeah. uh, gets released and that we know where, where we stand and um, what dates we're looking at coming back and um, hopefully sooner rather than later like you know because like you said there like you don't want to be you don't want to be busting a gut and it, it, they all be in vain like you know what I mean yeah absolutely uh, it, it, it's a tough one to kind of judge and manage at the moment but like you said, you're you're obviously the captain and you're involved in a lot of the PFA discussions and stuff like that. But I'm guessing a lot of the information that you know at the moment is what the public knows is that there's a lot of kind of uncertainty and obviously the PFA have put out the roadmap, but it's still there's no kind of definites there at the moment, which is you know, which is not ideal really for the players, is it? No, like that's what I mean. Like we kinda of... It's kind of been bounced around. There's, there seems to be a lot of different. Like you have the clubs, you have the PFAI, you have, you have the FAI. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a lot going on there. Like you know what I mean? Instead of like, I think it kind of needs to be a case of where the clubs, the PFAI, the FAI, the government all come together yeah. and get on the same page. You know what I mean? At the moment, I think um, there's nobody really knows where anybody fully stands. You know, so it's mm. difficult. Like and. I know, to be fair, they're, they're all working towards it, you know, because everybody wants football back. But um, there's a lot to it, you know, with the financials. And then um, I think the testing and stuff, you know, and at the, at the end of the day, I would imagine it all comes down to the government, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, I'd say there's a lot more meetings to take place before we before we get back on a pitch, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, and like, what's the kind of mindset of yourself, Garrod? And look, obviously, you're in contact with the other players and stuff like that. What, what's the kind of thought process? Is it... Is it kind of a, a mixed bag? Is it kind of you all you're all leaning towards we're bursting to get back? We want to go back as soon as possible. Is you know because everyone is has their own circumstances or in their own situation personally, you know, and professionally. Is it kind of is it a bit of a mixed bag or, or are you all kind of in the same boat really? Of like let's say you were even given the option of going back right away. What's what are you kind of thinking? You know yourself and the consensus of the other players. Yeah. Um, it is a mixed bag to be fair like you said everyone has their own circumstances like um, for me personally it would like um, the health side of it is what I'd be I would be more, most concerned about because I'd be um, my wife has asthma so I'd be worried like that going to training or whatever playing games if I contracted COVID-19 bring it home kind of thing that would be my main concern so like for me as long as like the main thing is to get the medical side covered um to get the testing in place and all that and then you know what I mean it, it there's always going to be a risk like you know what I mean yeah. that there's that's that's going to be for a while like but um I just think as long as the testing gets put in place and all and all the rest of it uh the medical protocols that need to be like in the training ground and the rest of it I think that gives me peace of mind then I'm going right well you know what we've done everything possible um mm. and everything's there for us you know and um for the sake of football as well, like you, you do need to at some point say, right, let's have a go at it, like you know. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the rest of the lads, yeah, like to be fair, like I said, technology is kind of, you know, it's kind of saving us a bit because 
we can all keep in contact and everybody's yeah. keeping up to date with each other. Um, I suppose frustration is the main one that seeps through when you're chatting to the lads because like, I come out of the, the PFEI meetings and um, I'm relaying the information to the lads and you know, some week after week, like some weeks you're kind of going, right, we're getting somewhere and then all of a sudden there's a setback and I'm on to them, then look, this is going to be another while or prepare for this or look, this is the best thing you can do. So, um, yeah, frustration, I would say, is the main thing seeping through at the moment. But, um, you know, we have a good group, like, and to be fair to them, uh, you know, they, they see the positives in a lot of it, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and they're all getting out, they're all, they're all exercising, they're all doing their own thing. So, they are, you know, they're keeping their spirits up, um, regardless of, you know, the information that yeah. is coming through that's been put off another week, another week. So, um, yeah, we're okay, like, you know, collectively, I think, I think we're doing um, we're doing well well as can be expected like and uh, I know from speaking to, to Joe Gamble even the zoom sessions that you, you done it's 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 probably even as much to do with you know getting the, the team back together and getting the lads back on and you know a bit of banter and you know more even more so than the actual probably work that you're going to get out but really like isn't it you know just to keep everyone 100%. In touch, keeping, yeah keeping everyone you know in yourself there yeah, or did you do one right but you do one with Baz, with Ring Man. Yeah, we've done G. a few, yeah. And it does, it, again, it, it, it's, you know, everyone was on having the crack. There was more laughs than work had been done. But, it, you know, that's, that was exactly. kind of the thought process behind it. It was really kind of, you know, because you're on for, what, a half hour, 45 minutes. You're not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, it's a I short time. I think with us, we were like, we were all like, when Joe put it up, you know, the group, the, so we'd have the, We'd have the city group chat, and then you have the lads, they're just the players kind of thing. Like, oh, <laughs> Joe, Joe put it up, like, and uh, group chats, like oh, yeah, yeah, one's just for giving out about the other one, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Joe put it in, and you know, the lads were all laughing, you know, it's, it was early in the morning. Well, it wasn't really, but I suppose yeah. now everybody's lying in most mornings, exactly, so they were like, yeah. we, we have to get up for that, and um, so giving out, kind of. And then when we got into it and we got it done afterwards, like. I don't know about the lads, like, but I didn't even want to hang up because the banter yeah, was I, good. Everyone was in high spirits, you know. Everyone was having a bit of crack, and yeah. um, so I thought it was just, from that point of view, oh, massive! Like even afterwards, mentally, I felt way better. I was like, you know, because at that point, like you were isolating, like you couldn't really yeah, see anybody, oh, like yeah, yeah. so. Um, just to actually be able to just chatting with a group of lads there, like you know, in your in your living room or whatever. Um, I thought it was uh, it was great for morale more than anything, like and. To be fair, you did, like Joe done a good one. We got a sweat, like you know, and um, like you said, like it's kind of more morale booster than anything. Yeah, no, I was look, look good, and as we've done a few of them as well, and they're yeah, they're, they're brilliant for that. Like you know, it's great, great to see the lads again. Um, so yeah, I suppose look, that again, um, you know, on the COVID situation, it's just to play a wait and see game, really, isn't it? And uh, you know, we, we for the clubs, as you say, for the PFA, the government, it's you know, it's 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 out of our hands at the moment, really. So we can only we can only play for a year. So yeah, um, look, thanks for giving us an update on kind of how you're doing and how the players are getting on and, and what you've been up to. So going on to the next part, we just kind of I know we spoke beforehand that uh, something that I was kind of looking to to focus on it on in the podcast was you know your obviously um your move over to England, how that came about and how it was and all that kind of stuff because obviously it's um you know it's a it's a it's a prominent thing in football at the moment and you know has been for a long time of you know young players from Cork and all over Ireland going over to to the UK and you know at a young age and stuff like that and you know there's been a lot of pros and cons to it really like you know and there I don't know the, the exact stats behind it but a lot of the guys who've seen they went over late or in age, whether it be like we had Colin on last week, he went over at 18, you know, Alan Brown, Kevin Doyle, Shane Long, all guys who kind of went over when they were kind of older, mature, David Myler, they've, they've seen to kind of, the, the numbers seem to outweigh the, the, you know, the lads going over at 15, 16 and stuff like that. And look, with the exception of maybe John Egan, you know, and Stephen Ireland from Cork, you know, I'm sure mm. you're missing out if you know, but you know, the you are just stacked against young lads going over, but it's a difficult one then because look, you were in the situation, you know, Premier League or Championship Club, big clubs come call and it's it's a difficult one to to turn down. Talk us through your um I suppose we would have known each other when we were younger and I seen you growing up and playing when you were younger, you know, there was without a shadow of a doubt like that you were going to move across the water, you know, and probably have to pick of the clubs. But I suppose 
we wouldn't have been very friendly back then, but we would have known each other. And I suppose from the outside looking in, which I probably was, I'm, you're thinking this boy is the world that's beat here. Like, you know, he's the pick of the clubs going on. It. But it's it's a different story when you're actually in the shoes, Gerard, is it? Yeah, it is. And like, I think, um, like even going back there, like what you were saying, like when the, you know, when the, the clubs are coming in and you have Premier League clubs and, you know, you're, it's like it's it, it is star studded at the time you're kind of like you're taking the back saying like this is mental mm-hmm. like and like you're just I just don't think like you know the lads going over later on and um, maybe they had I don't know did they have agents or what did they have or maybe they were better they had better knowledge they had better experiences but when you're like I was 15 when not like I suppose you're going on trials from about 13 on the whole way up till eventually you can go and I was about 15 and um, when I was really like I knew what was about to happen kind of thing like and you know you're um, you you need people around you who really know what's going on like you know what I mean and understand and sh- like kind of sh- lay the options up here whereas like my mum and dad never had, they never had to deal with any of that like so yeah. they, didn't have a, they didn't have a clue they just thought like because every person you talk to it's a massive positive they're like you know the local shop wherever you go like they're just like yeah. they just think it's the best thing ever but um i suppose if what should happen like you should be able to step back and have a look at it and see what's the best thing to do you know and um i i'd agree with you like i think uh the lads who say look i'm, I'm wanted now whatever i'm 16 but i'm gonna wait i'm gonna do my leaving sort and then if you're still there i'm gonna move i'll i'll do it then um, I think that uh, that's a far better route. Such an easy thing to say, though, like, isn't it? It's oh, such an easy thing to say, oh, like, so rather, easy. like, if there's yeah. Premier League clubs knocking on your door or whatever it might be, it's such an easy thing to say. And, like, not just for yourself, but for parents as well. And there's tons of parents in the same boat, like, you know, that are, like, their kids, you know, it's probably the dream for the kid growing up to play for a Premier League team or a big club, and they come knocking on the door. It's very difficult to say. It's and it's it's, it's, it's it's almost unfair on the parents, like because, mm. um, you know, being put in that position, it, uh, you know, obviously it's a great position to be in, but yeah. that's such a tough, you know, because it's life changing. Like in, uh, I, I suppose in a way, like everybody's almost set up for, like you have to beat the odds to come out the other side of it. Really, like you said, there's a couple who've done it, but like, um, I think there should be a lot more in place for parents and for younger players. To educate them on what's what's happening and what's about to happen, and the the possibilities and the the, the alternatives and the options, and even like my mum and dad like going into meetings with fellas like in, um, you know, I remember being at Southampton and Mal- Malcolm Elias was the academy manager, and um, he ended up being in Liverpool. He ended up moving to Liverpool uh, shortly after that. But um, you know, my mum and dad might be in in a meeting and like if the you know a Premier League club they will which they were all over championship at the time, but, you know, they'll do anything to kind of sway in their favour, yeah. like, they know there's other they clubs. So, like, yeah. I remember my mum and dad having a meeting, and uh, Matt Letizia come walking in, and he sits down and stuff, and he's getting involved, and, you know, that's not by, that's not coincidence, like, you know what I mean? So, and then my dad wouldn't have been a big fan, so then, like, you know, straight away, he's he's wowed, and he's not thinking, yeah. you're not thinking clearly, you know, so, yeah. um, it's tough, and, uh, like, I just, I, like I said, I think you're set up for failure, but I think you do, there's, there should be more in place, like, there, there's a obviously it's a lot different now, you know, like agents seem to be a lot more prominent now between younger players. You didn't have an agent at that, that age because I know, like, even some 13, 14 year old players playing locally, and you know, abroad they have agents from a very, very early age. And you know, do you think it's, it's the right move? Do you think it's, you know, how what are your thoughts yeah. on that? Or having been through the whole process? Like, I don't, like, yeah, I would definitely think, like. I remember at the time, like I was saying, my mum and dad didn't know much about the, you know, the logistics of a kind of thing, whereas um, Donald Cronin, and like, I know you know him from Ring Man, yeah. like, um, he was there at the time and he kind of like, he would come up and he would talk with my mum and dad about it and me and like help us get our heads around it. And to be fair, yeah. he couldn't have done enough for us. And um, it did, you know, that was that was a, a major help. And he would, uh, he would go away, do a lot of research and come back with like, even like uh oh, like documents and stuff yeah like and just all that's pros and cons all different clubs because i'd know at the time there must have been like there was, was there four or five clubs i was thinking about going to so mm-hmm. like i remember him banging all that together and coming up to me and my mom and dad and showing us and like p- walking us through it you know and um which you know at the time like 
at the time, you, like you're only a kid, you want to get back out on the road with the lads and have a game of ball. Like, well, looking back now and going, geez, that was worth his weight in gold. You know, like the yeah. fact that he was doing that, like you know, um, but uh, but then again, like he he'd never experienced that either. He'd never no. done it. He was just try, he was trying his best as well, same as my mum and dad. But yeah. um, I think that in terms of getting an agent, there's pros and cons to it. And don't get me wrong, like. There's there's really good agents out there, and but there's really bad ones as well. So yeah. like you 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 kind of need one who's who's going to look after you and, and care about you a bit, like you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So you spoke about the clubs there that were interested. Just name us out those clubs. Was it obviously Blackburn, Southampton? Were Liverpool were one of the clubs? Were yeah, they? yeah, it was Blackburn, Southampton, Liverpool, um, Ipswich, and Arsenal at the time. Um, so I was thinking about a few of them and. Uh, like trying to get your head around that is tough like you know what I mean and, like how do you tell someone stay in school like you know when, yeah. when there are those carrots are dangling in front of you but I said hindsight's a great thing but look, let's talk us through that um, how, how how did you decide on Blackburn why did you decide Blackburn how did, how did that come about uh, so I actually I actually didn't decide Blackburn I was actually decided Liverpool and I went over and I was like right I was due to sign I think and then um, Oh yeah, I was due to go over and have a visit. After the visit, then uh, was due to come home, and then that week, I think uh, I was due to fly back and then sign for Liverpool. When I got back, and um, in the same week, um, the the academy was he academy, I can't think of his name. Academy director, he ended up like flying in on the night we got back to Cork, and he came to the house and stuff, and um, we ended up chatting with him, and uh, he kind of he was laying it out, but my main thing every time we broke it down was like, I don't want to leave home. Like I was like, I don't want to move away. You know what I mean? Every time, every time it came down to, it, I was like, I'm not ready to leave. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, so I was like, for me, even like, even the, like the thought of it was so daunting. I was like, no, nah, I couldn't do it. Like, so it actually gave me anxiety. So like, even as like 15, 16 year old, like I'd be awake at night, like just thinking I have to do this. Like, I, I just want to play ball. I just want to have, yeah. do you know what I mean? Just play ball with the lads. And just because I was I was good at it, I was I was doing something at the time that I thought was like yeah. I don't really want to do this, like you know what I mean. Yeah. And then um, so what happened was he ended up saying, told him, look, mine's made up, like we're gonna go to Liverpool and and give that a give that a go, like, and um, he hadn't signed anything with Liverpool, no mind you. And then he he said, look, what can we do? Is there anything that might sway, it? like? And I just just like as a kid would, like I was like, look, I want. Uh, I want a house for my family over there and because I goes, I don't want to move away like that was it like bottom line for me Jeez. so then he he was accommodating like he was like look that's we'll do that like we'll have a house and um, like at the time my, I was only going out with my new wife Eve but that I was like I wanted like my, my parents uh, Eve um, you know my sister was there at the time and I was like, they, we all live in the same house. I was like, do you know what? This is a no-brainer. Like we can, and we lot, they all go to school, um, over there and stuff like that. And I uh, will just go to the training ground and things. But um, I suppose when when I got there, uh, I remember coming into the apartment or the being shown the houses. Like, and I was like, geez, these are great. Yeah, yeah, grand. So like, yeah, we'll um, we'll take this house or whatever. Thinking we will all just move in. Oh, that's that. And then, uh, but I was after signing the contract at the time. Like, so then I remember the man. Uh, the, the academy manager was like to me, look, you're not going to be able to stay here. Like, you need to stay in the academy. Like, And I was like, the whole sway of the move was on that. And I was yeah. kind of going, well, we negotiated this before I, you know yeah. what I mean? I was like, but then, like, my mom and dad were like, look, we're here now. Just just try it out, whatever. Like, Jesus. and I suppose I spent the next, and the, I was after, my girlfriend was after moving over. She was planning on going to school there. My sister was going to plan, but she was planning on going to school there. Um, you know, so there was a lot to it. Like my dad was getting a job, all this kind of stuff. So um, we were really after heavily investing in it, like you yeah. know. And then to be told, right, the whole reason of the move has been has been changed. So like in hindsight, I would have just went to Liverpool if I thought it was going to be the exact same anyway. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that was that, that's how that happened. And then uh, I suppose I regretted then not going to Liverpool because, like I said, I remember I was I was on about signing with Blackburn that week. Then Malcolm Elias flew over. I met him in Jory's in town. Uh, he's the Liverpool academy manager at the time. He was Southampton, but he moved yeah. shortly after. So I was, um, I was. He came over and he was like, he was trying to sway it and things like that. And 
you know, the, he he wouldn't give in to the the house. Like he was like, no, look, if you're going to come, we just need you to come by yourself. That's it. So that's how I ended up at Blackburn, you know. But in hindsight, I remember he said one thing. He was like, look, if you're going to go to college, he was like, wouldn't you want to go to the best college? He goes, and then if you needed to drop down to a lesser college or whatever, he goes, you could always do that. Like, you know what I mean? But he goes, if you go to a lesser one, it doesn't work out. Where are you dropping then? So even though Blackburn were Premier League at the time, but Liverpool were Liverpool. like So they were yeah. they were huge, you know. Jeez, it's, it's, it's a scary story, really, like, isn't it, you know, how, how things happen and why things happen and stuff like that. And, like, as I said, from knowing you at that age, like, you were, like, a really kind of, you know, just just a family person and you you had the same mates and still do, you know, that kind of a way, like, and mm. they just were out in the streets kind of playing ball all the time, you know, like, there was no, you know, there was no airs or graces, really, like, and, yeah. but, like, I suppose it's, that's what I'm kind of saying. It's 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 it's, it's impossible to really kind of know what's going on inside, you know, with a person yeah. because, like, from the outside looking in, as I said, you know, the world at your feast, oyster of options, you know, like, what does this fella have to complain or worry? Yeah. About? you know, that's the thought process. And, of and it, don't really. get me wrong, like, I, you know, there what, like, I'm saying, there should be things you don't know, like, you don't go into it completely blind, like, you know, yeah. I remember, like, I remember meeting Owen Hand, um. Ex Ireland manager there for, just for a bit of advice. So like I did end up talking to a lot of really good people, but yeah. in such a, in such a short space of time yeah. that I was overwhelmed with the info and yeah. what what was happening. And then bef- there, before you know it, there's a flight booked and your whole family has moved over and you're over and you're there. Like you know, over it feels like within the space of two weeks, kind of a thing. That's probably a six month period, but it feels like about two weeks, you know. And to get your head around the whole lot of that, and then you know get. The, get the information you need, talk to the people who know who've been there, who've done it, get all this and process it and make a, cho- make a choice, the right choice. It's extremely difficult at 15, 16, um, you know, and it, like I said, in, if it was maybe over a two year period and you're constantly learning about it, you might, you might get your head around it. But, you know, in such a short space of time to just jump into something as big as, big as that, um, it can be massively overwhelming. Like, and even, even when I was in Blackburn, like, I, I was there for like a year and seven months or I think I must have lived like even when I got into the academy like I lived in a suitcase like I I'd wa- like I had my wardrobes the whole lot but like it's funny thinking back like but I'd live out of my suitcase because if I thought if I unpack my suitcase and put them all in the oh, I was like that's me living here even though like this could be a year into it so I was yeah. living there anyway but it was just like if I do that men- I had a mental block I couldn't fully you know, commit to, right, I live in the UK, uh, no, you know what I mean? Yeah. Couldn't commit to it, like. Mad, mad, and um, I suppose hindsight's a great thing, but if you had your time over again, what would you have done differently? Would you actually went, do you think? Well, no, I don't, I don't think I would have went, I think I would have stayed, um, because, to be honest, like, I think, if you're, I was in high demand at the time, for uh, clubs in England, academies or whatever. So between like say sixteen and eighteen, like they're like as long as you keep doing what you're doing, like and which you just naturally would, you just keep playing ball, like you know. And yeah. um, I don't think they would have all fell off. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think you still would have got a move. You still yeah. and and you would have done it like um like I said, more time to get your head around it. With your leave insert, um you know you would you would have processed the information and. And you know, uh, that's a bit more mature as well, like aren't you? Like, like those couple of years make a huge, like from you know, 15, 16 year old to 18, like you're, totally. It's a massive and change, like, and, and like when you're going over to 18, you're going over, you're moving into an apartment, you're properly moving over there. Whereas, yeah. like, I moved into the academy at Blackburn, like, and it's, a, it's like a, it's like a lodge bit type building. And like, I was in there with the reserve team, I got into the reserve team at the time, so I was in there, I moved into that building, and like, every reserve player would disappear on a Friday after we play in a resi game, they'd all disappear and go home. And like a majority of them were British. Um, so like, I could be left in that building, which which was all like say, a 15 bedroom building on my own, you know what I mean, for a whole weekend. And that happened like, that could have happened like more, more or less every weekend, you know? So like to be in that situation then, and you have your own thoughts for a whole weekend by your, and like, you know, people will relate to it now being quarantined and you're in the house, like yeah. Blackburn as well, the training ground is out in the countryside. You know what I mean? You're not near the city centre. You're not yeah. so like, and you don't didn't drive. So 
you're just you're stuck there for the weekend so that slowly breaks you down too like you know what I mean so and then that all culminates to a decision of you know what this isn't for me like I'm going home you know what I mean yeah so that's what I was going to come on to next so you're at Blackburn you know everything moved over and all that but you said you were there for a year and seven months that number even seems to be etched in your brain really I'd say you can nearly recall each day that you were over there which yeah, really yeah. tells its own story but um, like Black, it obviously just didn't go well. You didn't enjoy it, I presume. Like you know, and was it the football? You know, how was your football at the time? Because I know you were still in Ireland squads and all that kind of stuff. But you know, how, did you feel like that it was even affecting your football? How you were playing, or was it? Oh uh, yeah, for, kind of part the two, but it was off the pitch. It was very difficult. Yeah, like even for the first, for the first, um, so I moved over there in. In July, so or just before July, uh, at the end of June, there moved over there to pick a house and all that crap. And it was my first proper pre season, like, I only ever done pre seasons with Ring Man. And you know, like, pre season as a, as a kid at the local the local um, football team, whatever, is totally different. Like, all of a sudden, like, you like sports scientists around me and all this, this carry on, and it was structured and it was like, you know, it was strict. And uh, you know, even just from then, I suppose, until then, until after Christmas. So yeah, it was pro- oh no, just at Christmas we got home for a two week break at Christmas, um, as the academy players do. I struggled massively like football. I just like I wasn't able to get in teams. Like I was like I looked like a poor like a poor player. I reckon like watching me, you could see I had something. I reckon, but I just it was like no, nah, it's just it's just not doing enough. Like, but got to Christmas, got the two week break at Christmas, came back, and I don't know what changed, but mentally I changed a little bit. Um. I came back. I was, I remember, like I was leaner. I was in, like I was better shape. I was fitter, and um, mentally, it was just I started. I for the first time since the move, I started to enjoy it again. And yeah. then um, I had a great run. Then up until uh, the summer, ended up going away, uh, going away with the first team. There was a handful of players picked to go away with the first team to Spain. Went away with the first team. So even just getting picked for that, I was going, I'm making yeah. progress. Like because I was picked with like. I think at the time, like, you know, there was Phil Jones, Jason O, uh, Grant Hanley, and me, and, like, um, like three of them there, like, went on to play in the championship in the Premier League, like, you know what I mean? So, um, I was I was holding my own, like, you know, and I was happy that I was making progress, and mentally then that got, I was going, you know what, this is all right, I can make this sacrifice because now I can see a bit of a goal. But um, as it went on, I remember as, as it was going on, yeah, I came back, and we got back into it then. I was like, I was full. The, there was like three or four players picked from the academy. The four I mentioned, the three I mentioned, and myself, and um, to become full time reserve players. Like, so, uh, what you said, yeah, ended up moving into the reserve building, the whole lot. Like, you don't have, you have house parents, they're there, but they're not there. You know what I mean? You're, yeah. you're technically like, look, you're, you're adults, you're on your own kind of thing. And um, so I ended up doing that. And I think, uh, that's where I, I began to struggle then again because. Like I said, the weekends on my own and things like that, they were just, they were getting to me. Because, like I said, the three lads who came up with me, they would disappear for the weekend and go home every weekend. And I was on my own for the whole weekend. And then you're back into your week's work and mentally it starts start chipping away at you. Like, so um, I kind of carried on like that and I was kind of going, the, the football was still going all right, you know. I was still training with the first team and I was doing okay. But thinking back now, like you said, hindsight, like I can only imagine if I, if I, fully was invested in it like you know what I mean yeah. how, how, because even the players like you might laugh like but like Phil Jones went on got to move to United like I remember we started like our first pre-season game or our first our first academy league game um, and he ended up I don't know he had an absolute nightmare like but he he looked like he never kicked the ball in his life and I remember Bobby Downs the academy manager at the time was like get him off he was like get him off he's absolutely rubbish Whip, whipped him off and from there on, then I say Phil Jones didn't kick a ball for like I don't know a, couple, a month maybe or a couple of weeks. You know, as an academy player, that's a long yeah, time because yeah. you think you should be playing the whole time. Yeah. Um, you know, and then out of nowhere he starts he starts progressing and gets into it, and and then he flies off and he, he ends up playing the Premier League for Man United. Like you know, so it's funny how it happens. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose that brings you up to the kind of I know there was a bit of confusion around the time that you came back because. Um, I think it was, were we in pre-season when Roddy was there, Roddy Collins was there at the time? Yeah. And, uh, you came back and initially I think was that when you were just kind of training with us to keep ticking over, but it was, that would have been around January time, like when it's all was a bit of a funny time for you to be back, like or whatever. 
you had you kind of, I suppose, without saying it, come to your own conclusion, your own head that you were kind of done with it over there and you would had enough that you wanted to come home. How did all yeah. that kind of work out, really? Because yeah, you know, from I when we were playing and training with you, the idea was that you were just back, for a, you know, that you were taking over yeah. while you were back. I suppose, I, came, I just came, I had a chat with the academy, or with the reserve manager, Ian Brunskill, at the time, and he um, basically just said, look, just, because uh, he could tell, like, I was, you know, I was down the dumps, like, I was just, you know, like I said, like the weekends were coming, I was on my own, so and coming in on a Monday, like you could tell I wasn't I wasn't happy, like you know what I mean? Um as you wouldn't be like stuck in stuck in a lodge there for a weekend. But um he just said, Look, go home for two weeks or whatever and uh, um take a break. He goes and come back and look we I thought at the end of the two weeks kind of thing. And that's when I started training with yourselves and Roddy and then I remember Roddy um I don't know, he I think he got on to him and he was like, Look, can we get him on loan? And he Roddy said it to me, and I was going, you know what? He was like, um, why not just make it permanent? Like I was like, just just get it done, make it permanent. I was like, because I'm, I was like, I'm sick of it. I didn't want to go back anyway, so I was like, you know what? Make it permanent. I remember at the time, I'd, I'd uh, Sean McCaffrey, the at the time the 19s Irish manager, ringing me. He was like, look, you're gonna have to get back. He was like, just train with Cork and get back. He goes, leave Blackburn. He goes, like, get just look. There's other clubs. Just get another club. And um, I kind of at that point. Even, I knew when I was even on the phone to Sean McCaffrey at that time, God rest him, he's passed away since, but uh, I knew then, like, look, I'm not going back. Like, I was like, whatever way this is going to work out, I'm not going back. And ended up getting a t- chat with Roddy and working it out, and um, and he got onto Blackburn and stuff. So I remember at the time the club were on about liquidation, remember? Yeah, uh, yeah and uh, I remember we I was training with you, like, and one day we pulled up and Roddy was like, look, we're not even going to train. As he goes, come on, we just go for a walk. And we all just went for a walk. And he walked. <laughs> don't don't carry a to cross Avon, was don't, it? Don't carry a glade to cross Avon. Up a hill into a church. He's like, right, lads, we're all just going to say and pray for that. The club is going to be all right now. <laughs> pray for our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> pray for our jobs, boys. I was going, what? Sitting Roddy in the church, I just going, like what is me. going on? Huh? He was nuts, to be fair. Oh, for him, bro, oh what a character, man. Yeah, but, uh, he, he, I playing for him as in like you know he's one of those he'd make you feel great and all that like but he yeah. was taught nuts like wasn't he you know oh yeah like, that like was and off for a walk like you know for yeah, two hours yeah 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 you know I know the, there was a madness in there like wasn't there but like it was um at the time for me like I never seen anything like that I was like because it was like as I said you know when you're with all academies and everything it's everything's by the book like so to to see that then some fella just go right lads training's off we're going for a walk. <laughs> Just like this is brilliant. I know. But, uh, but um, Man, yeah, I so th- but uh, that was the time the club were talking about liquidation, and yeah. I remember like you know, you George O'Callaghan was there at the time, Greg, yourself. So there was a lot of people um, who who knew the score, like, and uh, I remember just um, we I was due to sign down in Cove. I think City had buildings down there or and offices down there. So I was due to sign. And I remember getting down there, my sister dropped me down. I was like, look, I'm signing with Cork or whatever. And it was great terms and all this. Like, because I was only 18 or whatever it was. I was thinking, like, this is all right money. I was like, the whole lot, like, everything's... I goes, this yeah. is fine. Like, this is going to be all right. And uh, I was like, to Roddy, look, before I signed, like, I was like, before I signed a cessation contract with Blackburn and signed the contract, which all would have been done in the same hour with City, I was mm-hmm. like, is the club, is everything going to be all right? He was like, we're sorted. He goes, look, everything's fine. We're going to be all right. I was like, this is brilliant. I was like, great. Then signed the deal, handshakes, high fives all over the place, thinking this is the best. Walked out anyway, got home. Uh, six o'clock news, I think, came on. I see Cork City have gone into liquidation. I was like, what? The ink wasn't even dry. Oh, I was on the phone. Like, Roddy, what's going on? Like, I remember George at the time was on the news. George O'Callaghan gave an out about it. He's, wow. he's bringing me up. Like, he was like, we've signed a young player from Blackburn. He's just let his contract go, all this. But, uh, at the time, like you know, I was, there was uproar in my house, but like looking back, it's uh, it's funny enough how it worked out. Unreal. So then uh, the next year, obviously, all that happened with the club, and um, Tommy came in then, and uh, kind of look. I suppose it wasn't a bad place to start for yourself, really. Like you know, I know the club had kind of gone back to square one, but for yourself, you came back. You were at home playing first team football. Now I know Tommy used to be kind of particularly hard on you, and we used to be. Uh, we used to have a bit of banter about that. Tommy uh, Garrod screams could be here from miles around Bishopstown, I saw on many occasions. But it, yeah, like we yeah. all we all kind of know was because obviously, look, 
you were the not the star because that's probably wrong, but but you were the you know like you were the real talent and you were a bright future. For, so Tommy was obviously trying to get the best out of you, like yeah, 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 and that was Grand fair Nicole's. too, like yeah, and he did, like you know, like he'd wrote, like that's it, like and I think when it's like that, uh, it can be bittersweet, like but as long as the manager's playing you and putting you in the team, yes, you'll yeah. get over it. They can roar at at you as long as they're yeah. putting you in the team. You're gonna say, Do you know what, I don't care. Yeah. He's playing me every week, so and then um, no, it was definitely good for me, like you know, um, uh, just getting, you know, and and that you need that as a young player. You know what I mean? You, you come yeah. in because, like, I suppose. Although I know I wasn't, but like he could have, he could have been thinking, "Oh, he's coming back from England now. He might, he might have a think he is a bit of boredom, or he might be smelling himself a little bit." Like, yeah. um, which I know I wasn't, but he sure he wanted to know that. Like, yeah. and um, you know, I, I definitely think it helps in the long run. You know, just uh, just being roared at there in the morning, noon, and night by Tommy. But I think <laughs> I think we had a great relationship, though. It worked out. Yeah, I know. Yeah, as I said, it was obviously just because he knew you had even more in you, and I was trying to keep you on your toes, but. It's that those couple of years then do you feel they really helped you? You know, you're playing first team football in the League of Ireland at eighteen. Like it's it's not easy. Like you know, it's not an easy no. league. And uh, then John came in and all that, and obviously the rest is history, as they said. A uh, couple of great years then and that. Yeah, but like you said there, like like if I stayed in England, I don't know, maybe could have worked out better. But like you could end up on knowing there, like um, you know, Accrington Stanley and these, and no disrespect to him, like but. I could have been on loan to and Stanley on the bench for them, um, you know, getting games here, there, and everywhere. Whereas I was at Cork City, which is a huge club. I was, I was playing first team football. I was in the team every week. Um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't That's have complained fine. about it. like, and just in, t- for, in terms of my development, I think even the club getting liquidated and not having much money, um, really worked out for me because yeah. I was put in the team and I had to play, and you were relied upon like yeah. immediately. Whereas. You know, young lads coming through now, like you know, you'd, you'd hope that there's there's yeah. there's players there who, um, like you know, the club wouldn't be buying certain, get, have the money to attract bigger players or whatever. So, yeah. uh, the young lads, like now they wouldn't, but like, you know, the young lads now when they come in, they're relied upon, are they? You know, they're relied upon and they have to do a job. And I think that brings you on tenfold, like as as opposed yeah. to being, um, you know, when we were 2017, 2016, we had players coming in and out. And I suppose we were doing so well, they were able to dip in and out, like, and it was kind of, it was almost, I don't think it was a real taste of uh, men's football, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. You're coming into a team who are training up, um, you know, so, top of the table, you know, this kind of thing. I think yeah. uh, the situation I came into in terms of my development was um, the best the best for me. Like. It, 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 it's, it, it, and then there's a fine line with it, really, like, isn't there, after talking to Colin last week? Who's obviously pushing, you know, players to get time as a, the academy manager, and then I suppose the scenario that Neil is in, you know, where look, obviously he's he's the first team manager. It's all about results, really. Like at the end of the day, like so there's a fine margin between, you know, giving young lads a chance and needing the experience. Then I suppose to get you through the games, it's a really it's a balancing act, really. Like isn't it? Because yeah, it's very he's tough. kind of saying you're trying to bred people in, um, like you know, giving them games here and there, League Cup games, and they're on the bench and so on and so forth. And then, you know, like, it, it, it does take time. But when, I suppose, you have a cluster of players like that, then it, it makes it more difficult, like, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And I think it's, um, you know, it's probably, it's down to, it's kind of, it's, well, it's, like, luxury is probably the, the wrong word, but, like, it's it's down to, like, you know, obviously, if a player is good enough and he's, and he's young, it doesn't matter as long as you're good enough. You, you know what I mean? You you will, and if you go in and do it, then you're going to be kept in. But like a lot of the time, like it's a case of the player needs to be exposed with, like yeah. you know, time after time after time, and eventually, then he has the he, he's able to put it in for 90 minutes and actually put in a performance kind of a thing. Um, you know, so I think they've it's a fine line, like you said, but uh, it's down to how the team are doing. Like you know, it's it's yeah. very difficult to bring a player in when um. You really, really need the three points, or you know, yeah. it's um, and it, it, it's not fair on the young lad either because oh. if he comes in and he's under that much pressure from the get go, you know, it might hinder him, like you know, in the long run. So, like, unless he has that that bit of um, that bit of grit naturally inside of him, then um, I think it, it can be it can be a bad yeah, thing to throw him into yeah. early, like. Yeah, and uh, again, just going back to the your couple of years under John, then you really seem to destroy. Do you feel like the the way you know, like that you were an integral part of the team, you were pushing on getting a little bit older. The team was having some great success. You know, how did you find that period under John? Did you enjoy it? Obviously, I, I'd imagine so. But 
give us a kind of bit of an insight into that. Yeah, I, I um, you know, because I suppose firstly, like when I met John, I met him off the pitch, and uh, you know, straight away talking to him, I knew like this, he's a solid man. Like you know what I mean? He's um, he, he just even chatting to him, there was no um, there was no crap, there was no nothing. He was straight to the point, and I could see like you know when you talk to John, like there's all there's an intenseness in his eyes, like an intensity, like, you know what I mean? He, um, you can kind of almost see how much he wanted it. Like, so I bought into that straight away, you know, and he brought it, he had great people around he, John, him, him, John Cotter, Biscuits, Liam Carney, these type, do you know what I mean? You, you, um, they were great people. And um, for me, I suppose I had the best, best four years of my career. Like, you know, and like you said, we, we did, uh, we did excel and we did achieve, we did, you know, we had a lot of success. Um, I think that was a lot down to like John's intensity, you know, he, like in training. There, some of our training sessions, I mean, the boys used to be joking about it, like, because he used to be like a Royal Rumble, like, we go in and the fellas used to be just tearing the head off each other, like, you know. <laughs> so, like, the intensity was through the roof, you know, like, that spilled over from him, um, you know, and uh, it, it was kind of, kind of like a good cop, bad cop with him and Cots, like, you know, Cots mm-hmm. would be there, Cots would be, you know, he'd be the easier, he'd put the arm around the shoulder, kind of thing, whereas John was kind of, straight yeah. to the point so it worked you know it worked and then um, like you said we had great success and we had some great times and uh yeah i think um we we excelled and we had a great couple of years and i think one of the main thing was the players that we that john brought in were mm. exceptional like so like the standard in training was through the roof we knew like we knew one bad training session on a monday and like you could have a great tuesday and a thursday training but that monday session was sticking john's head like and he had the option to go, nah, I'm not going to play him today. Uh, uh, so, like, I don't know, whoever was there at the time, he's he's in this time. Like, you see, I remember there for a lot of time, and even thinking back now, thinking how like how good a team we had. I remember Greg Bulger was on the bench for us, and I remember thinking, like, I thought he was one of the best players in the league, and I was thinking, mm. he's not getting in our team here. Like, I was like, I was like, this is this is nuts, like, you know what I mean? So, the standards were through the roof. Um, and as well, as well as that, I think... I think John was a fr- he he would drop anyone on the drop a pin like you know what I mean he would say look you're not playing you know what I mean straight out like and everybody knew that so if you weren't willing to run through the wall and um, you were found out like and uh, he he would he would leave you out and there was someone to take your place like you know what I mean the the squad was very good yeah and uh, I suppose after that what was your kind of mindset then I suppose there was rumours coming around again that there was a couple of clubs sniffing around what was your mindset kind of I know we spoke to Colin Healy last week and he said around the 2009 when Ipswich came around that he kind of there was a bit in him that kind of said uh, you know he wanted to give it another go like you know was it the same when kind of the, the move came around for you to, to Cambridge yeah when I went to Cambridge that time we, I just had my first season with John and um, you know our team in terms of players, wasn't you know? In terms of the League of Ireland, right. wasn't star studded like you wouldn't have thought we were a great team. But um, we achieved. We like you know, we went into the last game of the season two points up. To uh, we needed a drop and Dundalk up in Oriel to win the league. Mm. Um, you, I don't think that would have been expected for us. That that was John's first year, like you know. Um, so we done that, and then after that, I was going. You know what? This is going to be great. But um, Cambridge were like knocking around, and I think they're they were only gone up to League Two at the time. Um, and you know, I ended up meeting with the the CEO and the chief scout and stuff. And you know, um, it was just for me. I left England on a sore point, like so. I was kind of going, you right. know what? It's League Two. I know. I was like, but well, you know what? There's there's opportunity there if you wanted to to climb to climb back up the table, like or climb back up the leagues and see what you can do, like you know. And um, so it was it was an extremely tough decision because, like I said, like. I think City at the time, I, I felt like we were just getting going again, like we right. were just about to do something. But um, I was just like, I was 23 and I was like, you know what? I'm 23 now, I was like, well, I just jump at it. like, And I was like, just jump at it. And it's, it's a, it was a uh, year and a half contract. I was like, you know what? Just do the year and a half and uh, give, it a go. give it a go. See how you get on. And then I, so basically the CEO, I made that decision. The CEO and the chief scout basically signed me. Like, you know, Richard Money was the manager at the time. So, um, I don't even think he'd ever heard of me. Like, you know, where's the CEO and the Chiefs go? They they had a new kind of business model where they were going to look to the League of Ireland. So they had come to a lot of games and they see me in a lot of games. So when I went over, um, you know, I suppose it, I look at it really positively, but in the long run, I suppose it didn't really work out because Richard Money didn't want me. 
So I could tell from the get-go, even when I was signing the contract, mm-hmm. he didn't want me. But the chief scout and the CEO wanted me. He didn't want to go that way because he'd never seen me play. I was like, not surprised. He, w- he might have seen a clip or something, but like, yeah. in terms of like, you know, you, you don't really know he up there. The, he wasn't your choice, as in, he wasn't your he wasn't no, he, kick, basically. No, I, and I, I don't think he wanted to look because he'd already, they'd already won the, they already came up in the conference and he had his players and he had, you know, he had, he'd been around the league. He had his own ideas, you know, yeah. but um, like I said, the CEO and the chief scout overruled him. And I think that reflected badly on me then because I think I paid the price. And, yeah. um, you know, went over initially. I I had asked for, I said, look, I've been out because I got injured my knee in the week up to the Dundalk game. Then I played the Dundalk game with a sore knee, which I probably shouldn't yeah. have. Yeah. And then I had like three months of doing, like I had on uh, November, December, um, doing absolutely nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Because we were yeah. off. So mm-hmm. I don't even think if I wanted to rehab it with a physio, don't even know was there one available at the time. Um, so I had said to the, said to him, Jez George, the chief scout the, or the CEO at the time, I said, look, if, I'm, if I sign this, I need to do a pre-season, like like at least at least a month of training by myself before I go yeah. into go into anything. Like I was like because I've done nothing, and he was like, oh totally, there's no problem there at all. You know, we're not even looking at you for for uh, January. It's kind of more leading up to the, su- the summer. I want you to start playing and. Uh, we're going proper for next season, like, and I was like, that sounds perfect. I was, I'd say, I was, I must have been there a week, and on the Friday, manager comes, and he was like, you're starting tomorrow. And I was like, I'm not ready to start a game. Like, I'd, I'd done like three training sessions in two months. I was like, there's yeah. no way. And then, in hindsight, looking back, I was going, was it kind of purposely to, you know, to, because yeah. I was going to go out and I probably wasn't going to perform well, but, um, luckily enough. My, like not luckily enough, but in in that sense, it was really because I wasn't ready to play, and everybody was going to judge on your first performance, no matter yeah. what. Um, but my grind flared up, so I was like, look, my grind's after flaring up, and um, didn't play. And then from then to the summer, my grinds kept flaring up, but it was basically because I hadn't done anything, no yeah, preseason, no nothing, just went straight in and went in with a group of athletes who were in the middle of their season. They were fit as they were fit as you as you'd be, you know what I mean, yeah. and. I went out to jump in with them and try and try and mix it with them, um, which was tough. So we got to the summer anyway. I was going to have an operation if I if I wasn't able to do the program and get my grinds back to the back to the strength they should have been at. Then I was going for an operation, which I was totally against. So I up for a month, like for about yeah about six weeks, I just blitzed the program, and mm-hmm. um, then went in done all the testing on my grinds. They were like, look, there's no need for the operation. The grinds are flying. They're the strength is through the roof or whatever. So I was like. Right, that's that done. Came home for six weeks, went back over pre-season. Um, in the meantime, like we played Man United in February, so they had a, in the third round of the FA Cup, so they got a lot of money from that. Mm. Um, so they, they basically invested all the money in players. So like mm. we were signing championship players, we were signing like players we probably shouldn't have been signing, like, mm. and they're putting them on really big money. Um, so like, then the managers under pressure to play them players to justify right. the wages and spend it on them. Um, so I got unlucky with that. But we start, I came back, we started pre-season. I was fit as anyone. Uh, we went into pre-season. One of the midfielders, the manager, signed um, Keith Keane. I didn't know that he signed from Preston or Rochdale at the time. Um, might have been Rochdale. And he got injured. So John, he was injured for the whole of pre-season with a shoulder or something. So I was basically right, I'm in. So I played the whole of pre-season. Had the, honestly, like probably the best pre-season of my life. Thought I'm chomping at the bit here, like I am flying. Then we, we played Peterborough last game of the season, last game of the preseason. Um, I went in, played that. Uh, there was, I don't know what was that, it was massive, it must have been seven or eight thousand at it. Like, you know, it was, a, it was a big game, even though it was just a charity game. Um, we ended up like, spanking Peterborough, which we shouldn't have because their, their team was a lot better than us. We ended up spanking them, like, um, I don't know, it was a 4 1 or something like that. So, like, manager took me off, like, 20 minutes to go. I was like, uh, a really good performance. You're going, he was like, need you next week, season starts. Um, so I took you off. Just keep you. You're gonna be fresh for that. I was like, this is great. Like this is um, this couldn't work out better here. Now, like, went in anyway. Um, first game of the season came. Manager named the team. I was on the bench. I was like, I was totally shocked about. I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't get my head around it. Like, cause even the CEO was like to me, you're flying. He was like, you're um, you're and the media kind of built me up a bit. There was all everything was kind of going for me. Like, right. um, then to be named on the bench, I was kind of in shock. I was going, oh, I can't. I don't know how that happened. Like then. Came off the bench anyway. I got an assist. We ended up winning like 3-1. I was thinking I'd done enough in that 15-minute cameo there to start next week. 
surely with the preseason getting an assist, I was like, that's me, and you know, definitely. Yeah. And then I mustn't have kicked the ball for I mustn't have kicked the ball for fifth, I don't know, was it like eleven games, ten, eleven games? And like you know, you're talking months there, like so. Yeah. By that stage, then, the, like I was like, no, nah, you know what? I need to get away from I need to get away from this, like because this manager, because the CEO was coming to me telling me, look, I think you should. You know, so I kind of yeah. knew my my thinking was I was right, but um, yeah, yeah. I knew he was justifying his signings, which is fair enough. He's the manager, like it's it's his call, and that was that was grand. But uh, we got closer to Christmas, and I remember he was under a bit of Richard Money was under a bit of pressure, um, so I was like, so I just started working out my own deal that I was leaving. I was like, look, I need to get this get this going because he's not he's not any interest in me playing. So I started that, got it all done was just about to sign it like and then he got the sack and um, meantime now like my wife and I were living over there like you know so we were fully committed like so it was, it was a tough year and then um Sean Derry came in and I was in the middle of literally that week I was flying home like and Sean Derry was so with me he was like look he basically he basically said to me look I want you to stay he we were he was there about two weeks at the time so he'd seen us train and play bits and bobs and he was like look I want you to say I want you to stay and um, I was at that time, like mentally, I was done with it. I was like, Do you know what? I'm just not feeling feeling it mentally anymore. So I'm going to um, I'm going to leave it. And he was like, look, just stay around till Christmas. I need you till Christmas. And he goes, look, I'll leave you go home for Christmas. And then, um, he goes, and that and that'll be that. Like you know, he was like, look, sorry, sorry to see you go. He was like, if I was here a couple of weeks earlier, maybe it'd be different. But look, he goes, I understand. He goes, I know the score. And I was like, fine. And then Christmas came, left, came back. And in the meantime, I was on the phone to John Collar a lot. So he kind of edged away a pathway back into city for me with, with John Caulfield. And, mm. and like I said, um, I don't think... I, like, was it always City look... that you were going to come back? There was it ever a thought that you might go to another team in England? Or was it all, did you always want to come home again? Yeah, no. Graham Barrett was my agent. And he was telling me, like, look, there's other clubs in England here. Like, and, like you see Rory Gaffney with over the same time as me. And um, I think he... He he basically had a tough time at Cambridge as well, but he was dead set in his mind to stay in England. I think, and yeah. you see there he bounced around a few clubs, and and he had a he had a, a great bit of success. I think, and you know he um he, he had a, a good career there, like you know. Whereas I my mindset was, you know, I kind of when I get burnt out with it, I was like, no, nah, I can't get my head back around this now, you know. So yeah. I was like, my, in my head, it's like get home, regroup, get back playing it, and if you want to go back, then go back. Whereas obviously that happened, I got back and got back and joined it, and we were having great success with City, and um, I was having a great time, you know, time of my life, like uh, playing yeah. with your, your friends every day, the boys having great crack uh, and winning. So and then you'd Europe and you'd the whole lot on top of it, and um, we were we had an unbelievable three years, like you know, um, so yeah, uh, so I don't... the double cups, cup finals, it, it was it was a way of success, really, wasn't it, over those couple of years. It was meant. It was actually a bit of a whirlwind, like you know. Like I said, I came back and from the get go, like we were straight into it, and we ended up winning the cup that year, and then we came second in the league. Then the following year, went into it, ended up winning, winning the league and winning the cup double, you know. And um, and then we we held our own in Europe as well, like you know, some unbelievable games in Europe, and you know, the travelling around Europe and stuff, and you know, I you don't feel like you're missing out on anything in terms of not staying in England because you're doing everything all. You feel yeah. like a player, like you know what I mean. You feel like a proper player, um, you know. So I had a we had a great time then, you know. And uh, obviously then it, it ended it ended uh, not not too long ago. But um, you know, you would have you would have liked if it, if it, like the the success and the, the staying at the top carried on. But you know, football like you know come it's, it's just the way it is. Sport in general, yeah. like you know. Did you did you feel like that from yourself and a few of the players who had been there over the last couple of years that maybe it was time for the change or what was the kind of feeling within the camp at the time? You know, obviously, look, it's probably the manager who takes the fall in the majority of these situations, really. But obviously, look, a lot of things didn't well. Players weren't playing well either last year and a lot of kind of things went wrong. But did you kind of feel yourself or between the squad that the feeling was that maybe a kind of a fresh start might be Good for everyone, or or, or what was? Did you well, like, like you know what? Back up? I, I, um, I don't know about the lads, but me personally, coming away from it and the way it ended for John Coffey, I took a lot of guilt from that, like because I was kind of saying, did did we did we end up putting him in that position, kind of thing, because we weren't performing. Yeah. So, um, that's the way I looked at it, like, and I was kind of, I would have liked 
to have a, another great season under him and for him to go on a high that he deserved. Um, but look, like I said, I think that's I think as the players, you're the ones that cross the line, you're the ones that put it in. You know what I mean? So I think um, I kind of wish we'd done more for him so that he could have had the exit that he he deserved in my in my um, mind. But um, look, it wasn't to be. And like I said, you you just learn from it. And like in, in terms of change, um. It's always the manager. The buck always stops with the manager. You know what I mean? Like the players, there's some players come and go, like you know. But in terms of a whole team and a season, it always, um, rightly or wrongly, um, but it always stops with the manager. So he's always the one that pays the price, um, you know. And I think that was the case for John. You know, he ended up he ended up having to pay the price for maybe maybe us us not us underperforming for the season, you know. So it's, you know, it's, but like I'm sure he's okay with that because he he's um. He's a, a sportsman, like he knows this is it's sport, you know, this, it's just the way it goes, and unfortunately, and sometimes. And an unbelievable five years, really, like wasn't it with Europe and the cup finals and do- doubles and, you know, FBI cups? Ah, at times yeah. I'll never forget, like, you know, the, I remember uh, hearing John Caulfield in something, he was, I don't know what he was on, some podcast or something, but he was like, look, we all went mad there for a few years, and we did, like, you know, we were. It was it's like a blur, but like we just mm. era we were like you know just living. It was unbelievable actually just finishing training off and just the high a constant high like you know just yeah. buzzing the whole time. Um, uh, going into training the whole lot you know it was it was it was a time of my life I'll never forget and you know I'm thankful to John and you know and Cots and the rest of the staff and the club and stuff you know for for that you know it was um it was a, a great time in our lives. Excellent, and I suppose that moves us on to Neil coming in. And kind of fit out the rest of last season was kind of Neil getting his feet under the table and kind of seeing what he has and obviously he a big turnover then in the off season and um, you know coming into this season which had just started and all that but you know what had been your thoughts uh, with the lead up to everything and and then being made club captain as well I, I'm sure it's been a, a nice moment for you. Oh yeah, that was um, you know something I'm extremely proud of and. You know, always will be like you know what I mean. Like if, uh, if football was to end today and, and that was it forever for me, kind of thing, I'd be that would be one of the highlights. Looking back, just saying like, uh-huh. um, captain my my uh, my hometown club. You know, um, it's not something everybody gets to do. So I'm I know I'm extremely privileged to have the opportunity to do it. Um, and like like I said, I'm 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 really looking forward to getting back at it and you know like getting out there with the lads and and um, I'm representing our county again. You know, so I'm. Uh, that's great for me, but I think when Neil, yeah, Neil came in, um, came into an extremely difficult situation. I felt, um, like I said, like it's it was unfair. Um, that sport again, like you know, it's 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 never ideal, like you know what I mean. Mm. And that's why you you do your best to come out of it and, and I triumph. Think Neil has said that before that if everything was rosy, he probably wouldn't have got the job. As in, you know, like the, these things come about by, you know. Yeah, it's um, almost true. Like, default or whatever, like, like exactly. yeah, yeah, it's true. Um. And how did you uh, find that? Obviously, you would have, you know, almost four years under John or whatever it was in total between your two stints. How did you find the change um, with Neil coming in? Obviously, a couple of changes and stuff like that. How how have you found it? Yeah, no, Neil's been great. Um, um, you know, on a personal level, I get on with him really well. Um, all the lads do, you know, and he's one of the lads. You know what I mean? He's able to mix it with the lads and have the banter and stuff like that, and then. You know, obviously he's the manager as well, and he can do that. And and um, you know, um, I think that's a uh, key to it. You know, being able to get amongst it. But in ter- him and John, uh, two great, two great managers. Like you know what I mean? I think um, uh, different styles and different uh, different approaches to it. Like I said, John's John's very intense, and even just chatting to John sitting down having a coffee, like even if he's having a lap and a joke, there's there's an intensity about him. Whereas I think Neil is more laid back, and there's a bit more um, you know, uh, he's. A, Bit more relaxed about it, and uh, just in terms of how he carries himself, and you know, I think um, I think there's pros to both of them. I think you know, like coming at it from a like uh, with a bit of relaxedness and things like that. I think you you can get a lot out of players um, from that angle too, like you know. And um, again, obviously, the start of the season, he kind of, you know, had a difficult start, but I know that the kind of the thought process and the mood in the camp was that there was something there like that, you know, it was going to pick up and, you know, that you were going to improve with each kind of, and you probably were improving with each game that you played really, hadn't you? Yeah, and I, I think, you know, we probably, 
we probably suffered from like the team probably suffered from you know like there was a bit of pressure from the fans mm. but I think it was it was more to do with the, like the team at the time with 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 John and stuff and that mm. season I felt carried over and it was it was really unfair on the on the lads that came in like a completely new team really like and all young lads like I went yeah. from I went from me middle of the road to old age pension or the team overnight, <laughs> like you know what I mean. So, um, and about that makes nuts, Jesus. Oh, yeah. it's that re- the relic of the team, yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, so that was almost overnight, like, and you know, um, in terms of the players, I felt like from when we started, from when we I, we all knew there were good players, you know what I mean, and um, good young players, but. Young players are young players, like they need experience to get better. It doesn't just happen, you know. So like we I from my point of view, I almost wish that the preseason was another four weeks longer in terms of getting more games and like and helping us because from I felt like every game there was just little things we needed to tweak from this from when the season started. But from when the start of preseason, I was kind of looking at it going, I don't I don't know where we are here. Like, you know, it was really tough to tell because nobody played with each other. Bar the young lads now coming through, but nobody played in men's football together. Like, and mm. we knew there was going to be demands putting each other. We were kind of going, I don't know, I don't know yet. Like, in every game, even of pre season, to get into, into the first four, three, four games of the season, from then to then, looking at it, I, would, I was thinking, we're definitely building. Like, you know what I mean? All, all it takes is now something to just ignite us. I was like, yeah. just something, just something to ignite us. And I think we were, we could, we could, we had the capabilities of, really putting a run together and kicking on and becoming, I suppose, making Turner's Cross um, a really tough place to come again, you know what I mean? And yeah. um, But like I said, it was harsh on, the, on the, all the young lads that came in, like, because um, there was, we needed more time. And But like I said, it's unfair, it's sport, this is it, you have yeah. to deal with it. But from where we finished when, you know, all this coronavirus and all that happened, um, I think we were, we were on the verge, even though results mightn't have said it, but you know, when you're in training with lads every day, there's a change. There's a change in how, in the intensity in training and um, and stuff like that, you know. So I felt it was back. I felt like we're getting somewhere now again, you know what I mean? I felt like, but in terms of getting all, a whole new group together, um, it just takes time. You know, there's no, and in the meantime, everybody speculates and everybody has their own opinion. So um, it can become really tough. I think so. You just, we just needed to, we just needed to keep doing, keep concentrating keep training properly, keep putting it in. And I think eventually with the, like, uh, even like the lone players that were there, um, the caliber of player was good. It was just about getting the mentality together, I think, for us. And I think we were getting it every week. We were getting it like, and it was going to come to a stage where we were like, right, we're actually, we're a, we're a team now. Like, you know, we're, we're completely bonded. We're, and you, all of that stuff needs to come into play. Like, it's not just a case of sign good players or, and, and go out and do it. Like, there's loads, there's loads to it. And, um, and like I said, I think time is the key to the whole lot of it. Brilliant. And uh, look, I suppose that brings us kind of up to now, really. So, look, thanks for giving us um, uh, an insight to your, like, it's been a fascinating career so far and, and a lot more to come, I, I'm sure. Um, but uh, again, obviously, look, you're in your late 20s now. Um, have you kind of put a thought on life after football, you know, and have you started thinking down that road? Because, look, obviously you know, League of Ireland players, you know, it is something that you need to be conscious of, you know, life after football. Is that something you put thought into? Would you like to stay in football? Yeah, something 100%. Outside of football that you've, you've, you've an interest in? Yeah, like, you know, um, I suppose I kind of started, like, I'm 28 now. From about 25 on, like, I've always had in the back of my mind, right, you need to start doing, getting things in place now, you know, and um, I think um, for myself, um, in terms of staying in football, I think I have a lot to give football. Like even when I retire, even from a coaching point of view and stuff like that, like because I love it. You know what I mean? If you love something yeah. that much, like you know, you're gonna you're only gonna add to it. Like, um, so I think I would. In terms of um, like coaching in the League of Ireland is really tough. Like you know, because there's not many jobs. There's not you know. Yeah. So it's a really it's a really tough. Um, England is different. You know, there's jobs going everywhere. But in terms of League of Ireland, it's tough. So. Maybe I would definitely like to stay in coaching, but you definitely need to be going on the route of almost uh, having a job at the coincides with coaching and staying involved in football in that respect. You know what I mean? Um, I, that's something I would really like to do. And um, in terms of work and things like that, I think um, I've a good I've a good network of uh, like business people and stuff like that over the years I've built up. And 
Um, no, I'll, 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 I'll look to that for look to them when I'm when I'm going to make a, a change. But like you said, um, hopefully that's you know six seven years away. Please God, you know. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, we have a couple of fa- questions from the fans that came in through social media. But first of all, we're going to play a little game. Um, two games actually. So the first one being teammate. We're going to rattle through a couple of quick questions. So <coughs> first players that come to mind and. I'm going to go through teammates first, but it's not just your teammates now, so we'll cover all the teammates that you've ever had at City, right? Um, so again, it doesn't have to be the teammates that you're playing with right now, any of your Cork City teammates. I'm more right? for names, like, I won't be more <laughs> name, yeah. Right, so first one, best trainer? Best trainer? Um, there's a few, there's a few, uh, but like, you could never look past healers, like, because no matter what, like, even, even in like, you know, drills and stuff like that, and passing drills, you know, sometimes fellas can go through the motions in them even, like, but even them healers is ratting around, like, you know, and he's, <laughs> his intensity is through the roof, he's sprinting around, he's busting the gut, and, like, he's not just trickling a little pass into you, like, he's banging it into you, like, and if you're not ready to deal with it, like, he'll be on your case, so <laughs> I, um, I would say healers, like, in, in, in that regard, even in the mornings, you come in, um, he was an old, he was a bit older at the time, like, when I was starting, he was kind of in his last two or three years, I suppose, um, but he's in the gym every morning doing what he knew he had to do to be ready to be on the pitch. Like he's on the bike every every morning without fail. He was on the bike while lads were just having breakfast and stuff like that. You know, getting himself going. So um, I'd say Colin Healy, yeah. Horse trainer. Horse trainer. Like I just said, whatever comes to mind straight away. Like, but Graham Cummins, like <laughs> the, the worst you'll ever see in your life. You know, um, uh, done unbelievable for us, you know. We knew we were playing and stuff like that. Like we, um, we had great, great times there as well. And he was banging them in, like. But uh, and Marky were kind of, they were just they were game players, like weren't they? Marky, yeah. Though, like if you got Cohen's out and all that kind of stuff, like Marky was like just give us, sure, give us remember, a game. Like. Yeah, do you know what Marky and, and Cummins they're just um, era Marky just remember that time Tommy Dunn was we done a drill like and <laughs> yeah, it was right. just too complicated for Marky he was like what's going on he just took his bib off and threw it into the air walked it up out the gate never to be seen again yeah Marky was like just get me in the box there like you yeah, know yeah he was like watch just put the ball in the box there like you know what's, what are all these coins for but uh, yeah two of them definitely brilliant uh, the fastest uh, the fastest um, he was only there briefly like but I suppose the 19s then as well he was with um, do you remember Chidozi Oh, yeah. I'm gonna the, the like Joe I'll tell you now as well from coaching him at Limerick I'd say but um just I remember playing Limerick one time and I was like I think I, like I don't know we done that year with Kev Tatton we done some uh, sprint testing and things like that and I was kind of going uh I was I think I was the fastest over five yards in the team Um I think Darren Dennehy at the time was there as well like he really quick feet over five yards but uh I had that, and I was going, you know what, I fancy myself here. Chidozi got the ball on the wing, and I was like, <laughs> it was just me and him. And I was like, this is, do you know what, I'll just stay with him. I was Rally. like, how fast can he be? <laughs> oh, my God, he turned on the burners. He just kicked it past me, and I swear, I never felt so slow in my life. <laughs> it was unbelievably quick. I couldn't get my head around how he was so quick, but, um, yeah, the speed of him was phenomenal. Yeah. The more skillful? Um, more skillful. Jeez, there's a lot. There's a lot of players there, um, but like, like I said, my my memory is terrible. Like, so the closest to the time comes to mind is like probably Karen Sadley or or uh, Stephen Dooley. Just um, Sad's just because he's just an absolute natural footballer. Like, you know what I mean? And left foot, right foot. You know, like even like keep you up. He's in like doing tricks and stuff. He could do him as good with his left foot as he could with his right. And and then you know you see him on the pitch where he's at. And then Dooley, the agility of him was frightening. Like, um, I, I don't know how many cruciates he's after giving fellas just twisting and turning. Like, what it's, he's unbelievable. But them two, I would say. Brilliant. The funniest? The funniest, um, have to be Nulls. Like, because he's, like, Nulls is 40 now. Like, and I swear, like, sometimes he acts like a 14 year old, like, some of the stuff he gets know, up yeah. that. And, um, it's unbelievable for the dressing room. Like, you know what I mean? It yeah. could be in the Jacks there, the hotel, like, uh, pre-match there having a meal and out of nowhere where like the door the, the wet floor sign just gets flung in under the door you think like that's one of the young lads definitely like then you hear him you hear him chuckling away like thinking it's the best crack ever like but uh, oh. yeah and also I would say you know he's, he's consistent like he's after having to pay himself knowing his coach and all like he's very serious like isn't he walking on just something oh yeah when well, he tries he tries to be yeah he's getting by himself like 
<laughs> but uh, he's great. He's great banter, to be fair, you know. And um, I think uh, Nulls is worth his weight in gold just having the dressing room. You know, even if he was to know, even if he never played, if he was just to be yeah. in there, like just for the banter, he's worth it. Like the uh, best singer. Sure, you've had uh, a few like those. Best singer. Um, do you know, is this is this current squad or all time? Anyone or like, uh, Ty Ryan, I would say best singer. Um, do you yeah. remember the keeper there a couple of years? Uh, I would say him. We had a night out and a team night out and Oliver Plunkett there one night. I think it was at the very end of the season, maybe. And um, there was a band up there, and we begged the band because he could play the guitar too. Like, oh, yeah. begged the band just to give him a shot. Like, or like, he's like, yeah. They were like, you know what? We'll take a break. Like, they had their glass of water, whatever. Gave him a shot. He had the guitar, went up. Um, I said, I was sorry to God they did it because the place was rocking with him. Like, you know what I mean? The whole place. And then the band went back on. The whole lot of us were booing the band. Great, great, great. But uh, yeah, Ty Ryan, unbelievable singer. So, uh, team MVP. So basically, the kind of one player that you played with in a in a city team that you thought, you know, it wouldn't work without him really. Like, um, I suppose if I went, yeah, if I went to the years we were really successful, like from from a kicking on, like you'd have to say Shawnee, like you know what I mean. I think when he, from that, from us kicking on to that success and you know having such a great time, I think he was definitely the MVP to the whole lot of that, like you know. Yeah. Favourite League of Ireland player outside of Cork City? Favourite League of Ireland player? Um, you know what? I always liked, I always liked, not just, you know, there's loads of players there, like uh, Keith Fahey, you know, all these fellas, you know, they're unbelievable, like technically ridiculous and stuff, you know, I could go through all them, but um, I thought, you remember James Chambers, who was at Pats a few years ago, he's yeah. playing in America now, I always thought, not just how he played, like, but, he was always tough. He was always hard to play against. And I just thought he carried himself really well. You know, like, in terms of being a sportsman. I thought mm-hmm. he, like, he was tough in a tackle and stuff like that. But he'd also pick you up off the floor after the tackle. And, you know, <laughs> and he, he, he wasn't, he'd always give you a bit of praise or something after the match. He'd let you know, look, I thought you were great there. What you doing or whatever. Like, so, just yeah. in terms of being a good sportsman, like, um, I think James Chambers, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks for that. Uh, now we're going to go on to favourites. So, really quick one. So, uh favourite pre-match meal? Uh, mine is chicken, rice and um, I try to have a little bit of veg with it like you know just a tiny bit but I'm a stickler for pre-match like because we pull up to the hotel there like sometimes we it could be like for me I have a slow metabolism like like I have to eat literally about 4 hours and 15 minutes before kickoff. otherwise I'm up to here with it um, but uh, so yeah with the, with the pasta and the rest of it like that you can go into it like Whenever I have it, like the digestion time on it takes me forever. So I just have the rice, tiny bit, of, not even much chicken, just a tiny bit, and um, a tiny bit of veg. Like you know what I mean? The, um, less is more, I think, for me, just for a pre-match as well. Yeah. Favorite drink? Coffee, americano, all day. TV program? TV program, uh, loads over the years. Um, but at the moment, like so, I'll just go right now, like because yeah. there's so many that I thought were unbelievable. Right now, I just start, me and my wife just started watching Modern Family, and I tell you now, we'd be breaking up at it at night time there watching it. We'd be chuckling the way so I'm really having a good time with that at the moment. Movie, movie. Um, I have a ne- my nephew there, Jay, keeps com- He's up there the last. He comes yeah. up there the other time, whatever. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> he's mad into Avengers. So oh, yeah. I think because of him, you know, I constantly throwing these. Who'd win yeah. in the fight? Tor or Captain America <laughs> all day long, like so. I'm after getting right into them, so I would say in game Avengers is is up there now, currently. Like your school subject, I'd say outside of PE because that's always a cop that he can play as well. Yeah, after. it is. It is uh, history. Loved history. Um, it's the only thing I would I would actually take in in school. I think the rest of it was just was noise. Like, but just the fact that it happened used to I used, used to captivate me. Like it was like this happened. Like you know what I mean? This is mad. Like you know. So um, yeah, I loved history. Last one, favourite thing about Cork? Favourite thing about Cork? Um, you know, being a Cork man there, like, you just love everybody, but you're so biased, like, you know what I mean? You think there's nothing, like, even when you're away on holiday or whatever, you could be in the most beautiful part of the world and you'd be on about Cork to the person next to you at the <laughs> table or whatever, like, so, um, yeah. I'd say everything, but uh, the people, I think Cork people are sound. I think um, there's a humility and a modesty about Cork people that um, not everybody has, you know what I mean? So, I'd say the people. Shout out to the Cork people there. Um, so, uh, there, just a couple of the fans' questions, so we'll try to wrap through these quickly. 
Uh, Dear Medici on Instagram said the volley against Finn Harps. What was going through your head? Um, not much. It just uh, we were up against it that game. Um, so like the fact we played Harps, you know, and they really put it to us that game. Like you know, we um, we were really under it. So the fact that it just it, the ball just came in. I took a touch, and as I as I took a touch, try to keep it up. The player jumped as if to block it, turned his back. Then I took another touch, turned and volleyed it in. Um, but when I went in, I didn't think it was that good a goal. But then when I went away and looked at it, I remember Nultz in the dressing room goes, because that's probably the best goal I've seen in real life. And I was like, yeah. what? I was like, I was, no, nah, I didn't. I didn't think it was. I just thought it was normal enough. Then I seen the clip and I was like, yeah, it, oh, looked, yeah. it looked good enough. Like, so I was going, yeah, that was uh, that was decent to be fair. So um, yeah, I was buzzing off of that one. Anthony O'Sullivan on Twitter said, um, was, uh, your, what was your favourite goal? Would that have been it? My favourite goal. Um, I've two. I've two. One against Rovers. Um, one against Rovers that I uh, just got, got onto it outside the box. Just struck it and um, went went in the top in. I think we beat him three, two, two nil or, or three nil on the that, day. That was in. Uh, that was in Tala, was it? Uh, no, no, that was, I scored another yes. one there that time, but that was in Turner's Cross. Um, I think it, I think it was two nil actually. We won. Yeah, it was one nil, and so they, they were still chasing it. And then I got that one, and then um, a volley from outside the box against Dundalk. Um, I think the the Finn Harps two goals I scored that they were probably better, but uh, it was just the opposition being Rovers and Dundalk. It's yeah. you know what I mean. It's just sweet to score yeah. against them. Um, Steve Bowley asked about uh, the differences between or the biggest change between John Caulfield and Finn, but I think we we touched on that earlier, so I think you would answer that one. Pat McAvoy on Twitter says four. <laughs> If you could have four guests over for dinner, footballers or not, um, who would they be, and what would you cook as the main course? Cook outside I'd the say, family, no. So, like, let's go for a few celebrities or people, yeah. people that we know. I'd be struggling anyway with the cooking. I'd say we'd all end up with Sarah and tea. And t- I only do <laughs> breakfast food, like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> this is there as the chef. She cooks up a storm, but um, I'm horrendous. They'd be struggling. Um, but, if, you, uh, if you were if you were on your own, you had to cook something. What would it be? Would it be your just your chicken? Do you know what? I just had this I had this conversation with Eve yesterday. I said I cook an unbelievable Mexican rice, and she said I don't. But <laughs> I normally stand by it. I think I do. Um, but that's all I have. All in, because I'm kind of fella like it all has to be in the one pan or the one pot. Like I yeah. can't have. Do you know she cooks there? <laughs> she has, on the she has, or... Ah, she has three pots going: the oven, the grill, the microwaves <laughs> off. And she's timing the whole lot of it. Whereas with me, it's either one pot job or it's not happening. Like, so um, I, had the, I had the Mexican rice, do that all in one pan. Like, so yeah. we're grand with that. Um, guests, uh, I definitely have the Gallagher brothers just because I think they, you know, I just want to. Like, the drama, but I just, as well, like, I don't know, I'd love to get into it with them. What's the, what's, what's the problem? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what's the beef? Let's see what the story is. Um, and they're mental, like, they'd, they, you know, they'd probably, <laughs> Gaff would be up in a heap in no time, but um, they'd be a bit of crack. Uh, who else is there now? Larry uh, Larry David, did you ever watch that? Larry David, Corby Enthusiasm. Oh, it's my brothers, my brothers, the brothers love that show. No? Yeah, I, yeah. Never, so ever, he's, I've uh, watched a few episodes, all right, but I never uh, watched it. Yeah, top. you're kind of yeah, into it, you're right. not, I think. It's Marmite or whatever, you know, but uh, I think his sarcasm would go down a storm, like, he'd be hilarious. Um, and then... I would just have uh, George Best. I think I love George Best. Like you know, I really think he's brilliant. So, um, my dad would have been a huge fan of George Best growing up, and that kind of passed on to me. So, I'd um, I'd have him as well. So, I think that'd be uh, that'd be good enough. Like, we'll wrap it up on the last one, right? The best uh, player you played with at City. So, what I do is I'll cut out any of the current players you played with before you get hammered when you go back to training. But um, yeah, so your favorite City player, maybe outside the any players that you played with. <coughs> Uh, I let's just throw in Nultz and Benno actually because they are basically caught stuff really like aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, like you know, there's been great ones like to be fair, like some unbelievable players there, like you know, um, you know, Shawnee and all the rest of them, like and all, like even all the teams back when we were playing, you know, when you were playing the team and them two seasons, there were some unbelievable players came through. Then even like and even moved mm-hmm. on again and um. And then the year, the years with all the success there, um, with the double and the, the FA Cup finals in Europe and stuff, the players there, you know, 
I couldn't even get into it with name and picking one out of them. Like, but, but one that would always, um, would always stand out no matter what. Whenever this conversation came up, always coming to my mind. Or even like if you went forward and went into like players like in England and stuff like that and everywhere. Um, you know, played with and played against, and you know, like I said, we played played against some really good teams. Like, and even in February that time, playing United and stuff, players were unbelievable. But um, I think Colin Healy would stand out for me because his consistency was just it never changed. Like, like no matter what, he was like, and it's, he's he's um, he's a bit of a phenomenon really because like he could he might not train for like I've often seen him not train like. He when he was a coach, he didn't train for obviously because he wasn't playing for mm. whatever it be three, four, five months, and then under cots and coffee that time he might be around, and then might, he might need to fall in. Just say healers, will you fall in? Mm. And then he was the best trainer still. And I was going, <laughs> this is nuts! Like how can this happen? You know that's, uh, but the, and then going back to when he was playing, just training with him and playing with him, the intensity and just the level, the just the standards he demanded, um, and the fact that he met him himself week in week out. Um, that's the reason he would stand out for me. Like, yeah, he was. He's, he's big, uh, big expectations. All right, to be fair, and he he was unbelievable. But uh, that came in from Donna Carl Sullivan on, on on Twitter as well. So look, that's kind of that wraps up our, our episode three of City Talk for this week. Thanks, Garod, for giving us an insight there to, to everything. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, really appreciate and hope you're you're keeping well and taking over. Um, so this week's podcast, you can be seen on our YouTube channel on Rebel Army TV. You can also be listened to on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and you can download the, the Cork City FC app on Apple and Android also. Uh, thanks to Aaron Howie on production. Meant to give him a shout out in the last two ones as well, but he's the one that makes it look and sound better. Um, from this Thursday until next Sunday midnight, we have a 15% sale on the club shop. Um, on all kids items including the home green jersey so that sale is on from 9am on Thursday to 12 12 o'clock midnight on Sunday so any kids goods that you were looking to pick up the the sale will be from 5 to 14 year olds Um, so Billy Woods is going to be the guest on next week's podcast so again same as last week get over your questions on uh, social media and you can email email us also on podcast at corkcityfc.e Okay, thanks for listening and uh, speak to you next week. Thank you very much.